Welcome to another in-depth low-level tech video. For some years I have this MacBook Pro 11,3 with Retina display and Nvidia graphics and so far I mostly used it on Mac OS with Linux VMs. However, since some time I wanted to use it more with Linux and one real drawback is that by default this Apple firmware is only enabling the Nvidia graphics if you are not booting macOS, I noticed this already some year ago, but it wasn't that important. I tried to get it to work, but it only worked a little bit. Because the thing is, if um, and this is also one of the reasons why you really should think twice if you want to buy a Mac, especially if you are not always using macOS, because on some Apple machines things are a little bit strange. So as you can see with LSPCI and grabbing for VGA, there's only an NVIDIA graphic although it also has Intel integrated graphics and the problem is that it consumes quite some energy. Let's check what it is right now. This is power. Let's disconnect the power supply for a moment. And also the Intel Linux driver may be way more advanced than the community developed Nvidia driver. So there are many reasons why you would want to use Intel graphic for longer battery life and at times better graphics API support on Linux. Other smart people thankfully figured out that there is some authentication needed for the EFI firmware that we are macOS and uh, to leave all the hardware enabled. One way to achieve this is to do this in the bootloader. You can also patch the kernel that I find slightly less comfortable to always have a custom kernel patch to do that. Oh, and also the custom kernel patch only works if you are booting the EFI Linux kernel directly with an EFI stub because other bootloaders like Grub already terminate the EFI runtime services so at this time the Intel graphic is already disabled and otherwise you need to have this in the bootloader before it terminates the EFI runtime services. So the code looks actually super simple. I have it here locally in my um, IT2 repository. This is a Grub2 module. So the magic thing is a GUID protocol identifier and uh, by the way, I really don't like this GUID thing uh, for APIs because these are only magic numbers, probably random generated, and um, it tells you nothing what it's doing. So if it would be name-based, like even domain, like com apple os identifier, you would know what is going on with these numbers. You have no idea what the service is actually doing. The problem, th this problem also plagues other APIs and uh, frameworks. I really don't like this magic number thing. Anyway, so what this is doing is uh, it's calling this protocol and basically telling the EFI buyers that we are running macOS 10.9 um, from the Apple Inc. vendor. And the reason why Apple is probably doing this is because they do not want to support the dynamic graphic switching for Windows. And while I can understand this, I really don't think they should disable hardware for the rest of us and we need years of reverse engineering to figure out what is actually going on. If they don't want to support this on Windows, they should just not use it in the Windows drivers, something like this. And there are even some Windows people who want to use this. Even some of them use this EFI mechanism to unlock the Intel graphics for them to use on Windows. I think this is really silly and not very customer friendly that they are hiding and disabling hardware from us. So this is what is needed. Very, very simple module, only calling this one API. And um, yesterday I spent half of the day figuring out why it's not working anymore. Earlier here was another conditional um, if OS version uh, greater or equal to, I think, and only then it would make the vendor call. I spent half of the day analyzing why this doesn't work anymore because over the past month some macOS update updated the EFI firmware of my machine. So it actually changed the API return values of this protocol and this open source code for bootloaders, kernels and, and such would not make this vendor call anymore. It took me most of the afternoon to figure out. Um, it's not yet really much published on the internet. With extensive debugging and googling, I think I only found one mentioning of this, so this is not yet very known. I can show you how this looks. Right now I booted without all of this. As you can see, only NVIDIA graphic. So actually there's one more thing. There's also um, 
a and vram variable so here's a small shell script and the environment variable is here some gpu power perfs fa 4c whatsoever something and also andreas Haider probably was one of the first if not the first uh, to analyze and debug this uh, efi hidden os identification protocol you can also set this with mac os utilities but it's certainly much more convenient to do this from your linux system and what this does is set just setting this variable whether you prefer integrated or dedicated graphics during boot this is handy because right now for me dynamic switching does not fully work so i use this to tell the efi bios to start with intel graphics enabled so we get intel graphics as primary graphic adapter when we boot linux so let's reboot and uh, i will also show you how it looks when this protocol is not called because now we are running on integrated graphics and you can see this actually the text drawing is already slightly slower here but doesn't really matter so much without the nvram variable we would now run with nvidia graphics and booting linux would work and we would have only nvidia graphics now we set this nvram variable to boot with intel graphics however without this protocol being called this also doesn't work as i shall demonstrate because now we simply get no graphic i'm not even sure if um, the kernel is running or if the machine state is totally corrupted so maybe we get the linux kernel running without any graphics but in any case we have a pure black screen because we did not authenticate to the efi buyers that via mac os maybe it's even a code pass that is not tested and it's simply buggy so now we need to switch the machine off i just wanted to show you this and this is of course really annoying when you get a machine that has no display and it's not doing much of anything and with this kind of things you even when you know what kind of things you're looking for you still need days to figure out what exactly is going on and imagine this andreas Haider, who certainly spent days if not weeks poking around in the EFI BIOS and I don't know, would actually be interesting to know how much time he spent with this. So the redraw looks low, so it should be Intel graphics. So let's load this grub module, Apple set OS, and we also need to run this function. So this grub module and function is calling into the EFI BIOS with this secret GUID protocol thing and is telling the EFI BIOS we are Mac OS, so please leave all the hardware on. After this, we can now boot Linux as usual. And now we should be booting with um, Intel graphic and actually a display output. We now have two VGA adapters which is exactly what we wanted. Right now we are running with the Intel graphics, which is what I wanted for energy and driver reasons. But there are still some problems. So then I noticed the machine is still getting way warmer than I wanted and like hot. Also, I noticed the frequency scaling is not really throttling down the course very much. And then I noticed there is actually quite some load of some K worker thread. And further taking a look here in proc interrupts, which are, by the way, quite many in modern machines. I noticed here some IOAPIC 9 ACPI interrupt, getting called 100,000 of or 10,000 10, of times a second. Figuring out what that is. A firmware ACPI GPE 06 being called already nearly 5 million times, if I get this right for. So, yeah, 4.8 million times. If we would disassemble the DSDT ACPI table, we would find out that this is going to the graphics adapter. There is a bug report for this. I can show you this at the end. But we certainly want to disable this because right now, let's see what our energy consumption is. Because right now the fan's already spinning up and the machine is even getting hotter than with the NVIDIA graphics. This was this uh, class current now. So right now we consume here current, by the way, because right now we have a current of uh, 3 million, whatever that is, maybe that's 3 amps. <clears throat> I should have probably read the source of the driver to see what kind of, um, actually PowerTop should also show us what is PowerTop showing. So actually PowerTop is computing a discharge rate of 44 watts. So maybe this is Ampere's uh, 
current now, voltage now, this is compute. Maybe this is 12 volts, this is... Uh, so maybe that is 12 volts and 3.3 amps would make 40 watts. So PowerTop says we would discharge this battery at this rate in two hours, which is certainly not what we want. So, so for now, um, as Intel graphic developers have not fixed this issue for this kind of Macs, I certainly will not do in one afternoon. So for now we, I think zero did not work. Now it's still enabled. So whatever zero, zero is not doing disabling. So now it's disabled and now don't have this K worker thread anymore and we have much lower megahertz of the CPU cores and we have a much lower current 2.2 amps so power top says uh, 30 watts so that's 10 watts less one hour of battery life more only avoiding million interrupts per minute one last thing we can easily do is fully disable the NVIDIA graphics because right now it's still powered on, just not displaying something. This can be done on the command line at least with mounting the kernel debug FS. Um, and there is VGA switcher room, which is the kernel driver for VGA graphic switching. So theoretically you should be able to switch graphics um, with this virtual file. However, for me, this did not work a year ago and it does not work today. If I switch this either to NVIDIA or if we boot with NVIDIA by default and want to switch to Intel, it results in a black screen for me. What this uh, switcheroo driver thing is also doing, there is for Apple machines a GMUX driver and the GMUX driver is multiplexing the graphic data and information lines between the Intel and NVIDIA graphics. And actually, as far as I understood, this Max even don't have the external graphic ports connected to the Intel graphics at all. So it sounds to me that if you want to use external graphics, you with this kind of Max, you always need to have the NVIDIA graphics powered on, which is of course not very nice. As far as I know with some PCs, all of this are muxed and um, you should probably be able to connect external displays to either of them. In any case, this is quite some limitation that many people don't know. And um, in general, the whole situation that we need to authenticate with the EFI buyers that we are Mac OS to fully use the hardware that is built into this machine is of course more than silly and really sad. So to disable the currently switched um, off, you see here is some audio switch and integrated graphic and, and dedicated graphic with associated PCI ID. And right now they are both powered on and the integrated graphic is um, connected. So what we can do is we can power off the currently not connected graphics. This takes a little bit of a second because actually you see in the in the D messages that VGA switcher switching the NVIDIA driver off and it's actually suspending all the console display buffers, object trees and such. So this took some fractions of a second. Anyway, it should theoretically be possible to dynamically switch for me. This right now does not work and a little bit inconvenient. I don't really need it though. Anyway, so with all those tunings, we have now way less than two amps, 1.5 amps running from the battery and power top should also tell us a similar story. We now have um, 22 watts and four hours, 30 minutes. And with all this talking with wasting quite some energy, we already discharged this a little bit. So on a full charge, I think I'm now about five hours with this two year old MacBook or so. And um, yeah, down from from over 40 watt that we started to in just 19 and from two hour battery life to nearly five hours. And this is even with this external SSD attached that you normally would not need if you don't have my portable developer setup. And you can even still fine tune this even more with more power saving with USB auto suspend and so on and so on. And obviously less display brightness. Oh, by the way, does it not work or what? Hmm. Looks like this brightness control doesn't work. So, okay. The wonders of, um, yeah, with Apple, um, actually the backlight is controlled by the graphic MOOCs. And where was that? Was it platform or? Okay, class backlight, that was easy. Let me 
version to know it. Okay, at least that works. So as you've seen for some latest Apple MacBooks, there are quite some hex and hidden gems required to fully use the machines on non-Mac OS systems. And in my opinion, you should really think twice if you really want to get one of those machines. If you are not using Mac OS at all times and, and may ever consider to use something else, even as an option later on, it is more and more becoming non-standard hardware that is annoying to deal with on non-Mac OS systems. And even booting back to High Sierra with this NVRAM variable set to prefer integrated graphics, actually the Mac OS was not switching back to NVIDIA graphics anymore and editing in iMovie was actually not very snappy. So even in Mac OS things become more strange and more buggy with each major release, which I'm personally using the hashtag peakbox for and which is also one of the reasons why I'm going back to Linux. And as I said in my PC review videos of the Dell XPS and Lenovo ThinkPads, I even like the PC hardware more. The aluminum case gets really hot and battery life and Wi-Fi may be even better on ThinkPads and so on. And in any case, with PC hardware you have more choice. At Apple you only get aluminum machines and with PCs you have other options that may not scratch as much and not get that hot to the touch. So I hope you liked this video and found something useful. I think even if you're not running on a Mac, there were plenty of details with SysFS, ProcFS, DebugFS and other bootloader and Linux internals that may be interesting in any case. And of course I would be happy if you subscribe for the next videos to come.